Hello, it's Meg with Seed to Fork and it's September and it's time for me to show you the garden. Um, August was a busy month in the garden. A lot of heat, a lot of humidity. We even had some rain finally. And um, I've been kind of ruthless in August with pulling plantings out and resetting them. And we've got a really big fall garden planted. So personally, I'm ready for the cooler temps and they're finally arriving. We've got lows in the 50s, highs in the 70s now. And um, things are changing, the sun's changing. We're getting a lot more shade in the garden than we do in the main season. So um, yeah, we're shifting towards fall. I'm ready for my beans to be harvested, my dried beans and all of our winter squash and things like that. Looking forward to our fall cabbages and broccoli. And um, so it's um, definitely a shifting of seasons for us here at the moment, like it always is, but uh, it's more marked right now because of the, the decreasing daylight, day length that's really dropping off quickly. It's like dark here by 8.30. Um, so I know that that means our season is quickly going to be fading here. And so I will um, show you all around the garden this month and I hope you enjoy the tour. So you can see what I mean about the um, light changing here. That is always the last spot to get light in the spring and the first spot to lose it. It's the lowest place in the garden because this garden is on a hill. So you may recall this was our earliest bed. This is where I had my earliest cabbages. I've now got some later plantings of beans, um, a couple of rows of bush beans here, and um, we've got beans in a few spots. So I've got them here on both sides. These were one of my earlier ones. We've got carrots interplanted with our scarlet kale, still doing well. I've got some lettuce in here. Then we go on to our tomatoes, which had a lot of septoria leaf spot. And um, there's still quite a bit of fruit on there. But check this out. We pulled the other half of the tomatoes this past weekend. So we're kind of ready for, ready for fall. We just decided it was worth pulling. So this is where my pickling cucumbers were. And they did great. They were absolutely fantastic. They were my sumpter pickling cucumbers. And then they started getting anthracnose. At first I thought it was maybe alternaria leaf spot, but I think it was probably anthracnose. It probably came over from the melons. The melons were another thing I pulled early and I replaced these with some daikons and some watermelon radish and some quick radish as well as tucked in some lettuce there, trying to just make the most of that space. This is one of my fails, one of my trellises that failed. This is my borlotti beans. I was really, really excited. I planted this very specifically to have just a big mass of pink mottled pods and our string wasn't strong enough. Our twine wasn't strong enough. So it is what it is. So this is another area, this bed, second bed back. that has got this lower leafy greens. It's got bok choy in it. It's got radicchio. It's got some iceberg. It's got some arugula. That is where um, I had my melons and my melons really suffered very early on. And I'm not sure if it was from the cucumber beetles or if it was anthracnose. But um, I had fantastic melons last year and they were in a totally different part of the garden. So I will keep trying, um, but I might take a few years off if the disease persists, because then I'll know it's just here in the soil and I need to be maybe rotate through a little more. Melons aren't a must grow for me. This is another area that I replanted. This had a summer squash in it and I took it out about um, two or three weeks ago because I have another summer squash planting where I had turned a bed over and this has mustard greens and Sorrento Rob and some more watermelon radish. Watermelon radish are our absolute favorite. They store really well in our root cellar. So we are trying to grow as many as we can. Here's another area that I have overturned. This was our eggplants. I harvested all of our eggplants. I mean, they were flowering, but hello, it's September 1st. There's just no way. So I turned this over to arugula and quick radishes. Um, they have not germinated yet. I just planted them a couple days ago. We've got some fall celery there and we've got more fall uh, watermelon radish. That's more Sorrento Rob and bok choy there. These are our Amarosa potatoes. These are the last ones to start to die back. The rest of them have all died. I've got kohlrabi here and some beets, more kohlrabi there, more bok choy, lettuce, beets, and then I've got some Chinese cabbage I'll show you. Our Brussels sprouts are coming along. We actually should start to eat them. 
These are our fall Chinese cabbage. We grow these primarily to make um, kimchi. So we've got, I think, eight of them here. Hopefully we'll get eight really good heads out of it and that will help get us through some of our fermented needs for the winter. But I just love this view. This very much reminds me of spring. I love the colors of the fall brassicas. I love mixing these red foliage with green. Um, and I love just the real low lying and um, petite and compact growth form of brassicas. It's really one of the reasons I absolutely love them in my garden. Here's some of our carrots. We've got carrots in lots of different beds. Do we have enough carrots for the winter? It's always kind of a question mark. I mean, last year we ate, we had so many that we were very generous about eating them. We ate them kind of whenever we wanted through the new year, which was daily. And this year, I don't know, time will tell. We've got lots of delicata. I started pulling our other popping corn out of here. You can see it's left on the path there. And what's left in here are dapple gray beans. These are one of my favorite beans because I actually really do need to come in here and harvest. I can see that. I'm going to try to open this for you so you can see why I love this bean. Look how beautiful these beans are. They really are something to behold. They're absolutely gorgeous. And the thing that I loved about them so much, I grew them for the first time last year and I saved seed and I'm growing most of these from the seed that I saved is that they hold their modeling after cooking. We use them in like a cassoulet and they were just fabulous. So I grew tons more of these because I would love to have enough of these to get us through the winter and enough to grow next year. And surprisingly, the asparagus this year is still green. The last two years, it's actually turned brown by early September. And I'm really kind of surprised that it's still green. I think it's fantastic. Um, we could have harvested it more. Look how full and lush it is. But I do just love an asparagus patch. I really do just love it. Here's another, this is where we had our garlic. I pulled our garlic in late July. And I might've showed you, I see a cabbage moth. That just kind of is what it is. Um, I've got some lettuce in here and some broccoli and some cabbage and some radicchio. So this is kind of a mix. Um, I'm, I'm happy I have this. I sort of forget that this bed is here because it's way off in the corner. So this is our northeastern corner of the orchard and of the garden and we had our strawberries here and we actually ripped all of our strawberries out. It was about the fourth year of having them. Strawberries are a short-lived perennial and so we are going to be replacing them with perhaps a new variety next spring. We're not quite sure. We might even consider building raised beds back here. We haven't quite figured out our plan. In addition to mowing these strawberries, what I did was I, I thinned them out quite a bit and now they're growing back with a little more space. You can kind of see the difference here between that area right there and this area here. Just a little more open, a little more breathing room. And we've got lots of cabbages. We've got cabbages everywhere, which is great. Cabbages are another thing we like to ferment and make into sauerkraut. And oh, we've got a Vita Verde. We've got some red cabbage, some Savoys. So these are our potatoes. And at this point in the season, I'm just letting these be and we'll dig them up when we're ready. Um, because we have enough space in our garden, we can just leave them in the ground. You can see that I really should have held these. Do you see how these guys are, these guys are um, photosynthesizing, which is not good. A couple of them are, a couple of the plants, but. So we are mostly done with our bell peppers. There's a few left in here, but by and large, this is more or less a, a flower pollinator garden at this point. Um, in with the sweet alyssum is um, we've got tomatillos and you guys, I'm just not that into my tomatillos. I had to learn that the hard way. This was pep, uh, potatoes right here, Yukon Golds. I think I mentioned that they were kind of diseased sometime in July. I made the tough decision and I just ripped them out um, before the end of July and we have been enjoying potatoes this summer, which is kind of unusual. We usually wait until the fall to eat them. Um, and I replaced it with a second succession of squash. This is why I was okay. I mentioned this already, um, ripping out my other squash. I've got more watermelon radish. This was my earliest planting of watermelon radish. And then uh, I've got a sun late, very late sunflower. And then we've got some more really yummy peppers that I'll show you. These are a really fun pepper and they are called a habanada. So they are habanero 
type pepper without the heat. You've got some jalapenos, you've got more Jimmy Nardello still, which as you probably know from last month, I'm a huge fan. And then this is maybe a later bell pepper here, probably the last of our bells. All right, so here is another section of the garden that has been replanted. I had my cucumbers in here and on either side I had grown our garbanzo beans, our chickpeas. The chickpeas have been harvested and they are in our root cellar drying. And where the cucumbers were, I have sowed a whole bunch of radishes and I can see radishes are germinating. More germinating radishes, which is great. Um, we love radishes. We pickle them. We eat a ton of them fresh, so we cannot have too many radishes. More radishes here and arugula. So um, as you can see, except for where the potatoes are, everything in the garden has been replanted. Oh, and this is the last thing I want to show you because I totally forgot about this, but this is probably the prettiest little planting of brassicas. So as you remember, I had my buckwheat and then I did my fall crops down there. And that bed was kind of slower to establish than this one. So it should be no surprise that these are just ready. This is a tender sweet green cabbage. We've got our um, Famosa Savoy. And then I've got a couple of different kinds of broccoli and you can see the difference in maturity here. Look at these, we've got several beautiful heads of broccoli. This one. And then I think this is the biggest one here. I'm gonna try to reach in and show you. Yeah. Oh, I gotta love a broccoli head. So those are just about ready to be harvested. All right, so this is our raspberry bed that's been kind of a mess, but also quite a bit of a success. Um, we took out some raspberries because they weren't performing well and I planted it, just kind of interplanted it all willy nilly. And these were planted out later and you can see just how productive the sun golds are in here. They really are massively productive. Um, we've been harvesting several pounds a day out of this bed. I think that's just two plants here, but I didn't prune them at all. So they have um, sent up a lot of suckers. So I've been really pleased with the nasturtium. I've always wanted to do this under the espalier orchard. It looks really great, great spot for pollinators. And um, I just think it's an absolutely beautiful massing of color and texture in the orchard. And we also have some strawberries in here as well. And those will probably take over next spring. And I might not plant this with nasturtium next year. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, and so I came out of the garden to show you, well, a little bit. I love my flowers out here. I had some onions interplanted in here. I will say the elderberry has really started to um, take hold of this part of the garden. This is outside of our north orchard. And um, long term, our plan is to stretch it all the way down so that it has even more of a barrier. I have already harvested a full gallon Ziploc bag of elderberry, and you can see all the elderberries that need to be harvested. They should be harvested when they're as dark black as possible. Um, a lot of them are dropping, which means more elderberries for the property. I've seen cedar waxwings in here. It has been actually the first time in my life I've ever seen a cedar waxwing, and they were in the shrub this week. So um, this is the beautiful kind of natural consequences of adding native edibles to your landscape is that you're bringing in wildlife that you didn't know was here or could be here. Um, I had no idea this was going to attract a cedar waxwing in the summer. I always think of them as being winter feeders. So needless to say, I was very delighted. I just want to say thanks again for watching the tour. I hope you enjoyed seeing where the garden's at and certainly things are going to change again in the next four weeks, um, depending on what our weather's like. If we have a frost, it's going to look a lot different. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you are still planting your fall garden. Most of you probably have a little more time than we do. So keep sowing some seeds and stretching that season and making the most of the ground you have to work with. Hope you have a fantastic month and thank you so much for watching. Take care.